Hi, Sylvia. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me here. So I've been really looking forward to this conversation for a while. I've, as you know, really been a big fan of your art basically since we met. And there's a lot that I want to dive into hearing from you about your art and sharing that with folks. And maybe just to start, uh, I've been really enjoying attending your doodle and chat sessions, these weekly drawing gatherings that you're doing on Zoom. And I'd love to hear from you, like, how that has been for you, how it's been to host that, and tell me more about what Doodle and Chat is. It's been lots of fun. It's I'm still figuring out what I want them to be and what people want them to be. But basically, we're just meeting every every Saturday at six p.m. London time, and just spending one hour drawing together. When we started, I was thinking about a topic for each section for each session, and um, then we would do something around that topic. But more Latin, now I'm more um, just leaving it open, and basically each person brings something that they're working on, and then we take a moment at the beginning to share with each other what we want to do. Then we just spend a while drawing, and then at the end we share with each other what we made during that session. So yeah, I don't know if it's going to continue this way, but it's a lot of fun to draw with other people. I find that I'm so much more focused if I know that there's other people drawing around me and we're all doing the same thing. And it's like, I, I'm definitely not gonna do anything else while I'm there. Whereas if I'm on my own, I get distracted more easily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, easier to be in the flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just really been enjoying attending it. Even though it's uh, like an hour, it just feels like that hour goes by so quickly, just drawing with mm -hmm. everyone. and. I always really enjoy it. So thanks for hosting those. And um, mm -hmm. thanks for, for attending them. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and kind of how you came to start doing art and anything that you'd like to share at whatever length about your own background and life story. Sure. Um, so I've been making art since I was a child, pretty much. Um, yeah, my mom still keeps the thousands of drawings I've made throughout my life. Um, and I studied visual arts in high school, and then I studied also visual arts uh, in college, and I, I didn't really like college. Um, it was a bit of a traumatic experience for me. I, I don't know, I think I just basically I finished high school and then going to college was the thing to do. And I had really good grades in high school. So I just chose like the thing with that required the highest grades within my area and just like chose that, <laughs> which is graphic design. Um, and yeah, then I didn't really connect with the people that were um, at my university and I didn't really connect with the degree. And I guess I was trying to be someone that I wasn't really, there was like this big hipster culture and just being like, trying to be like super artistic, just um, in a way that felt really forced. Um, yeah, and I think I, I gained a general trauma with art. Like after I finished college, I, I, I didn't want to have anything to do with art. So I, uh, during college and also during high school, I was also a part of the European Youth Parliament, which is this uh, European NGO. It's basically f like simulations of the European Parliament, but for young people. And it's it's kind of an excuse for people to just like party together and, and meet people from other countries. So I, I was like, I had a very international circle of friends. I'm from Portugal and, and I was living in Portugal at that time. Um, and, yeah, and, and I met my partner at that time when I finished college through the European Youth Parliament and he was living in Scotland. So I decided that I just wanted to leave Portugal. So I decided to go to Edinburgh and this was like a new, very important phase in my life. It was the first time that I lived outside of my parents' house. So that was like, I felt like I, for the first time I was independent and I was in a completely different place. And this was also when I started doing more introspection and inner work. Um, 
And I also got into art from a completely different angle than um, up until then. So I started doing performance and interactive performance specifically. And I, I did that for a while, while in Edinburgh. I, it just started with me and a group of friends. And we wanted to create these containers, uh, which were like fun experiments for people to connect with one another in unusual and a little bit deeper ways. Um, so we started really small. Like the first one was, it was a group of three of us. And we just invited people to, to my flat. And we basically, it was a one person audience performance, interactive experience, that's what we called it. And then the person would come into the room and there was a projection, like a screen projected on the wall with a guy <laughs> talking. Uh, and there were several objects in the room and there was a table with headphones. So the person would come in the room and they were just like looking around and they could do anything they wanted. And then eventually they would sit at the table facing the projection on the wall and they would put on the headphones. And, and then they would realize that they could interact with this guy. And after a while, they would realize that this guy was a radio host and this was a show about them. So they would be talking about different topics and eventually they could also interact with the objects in the room that served as metaphors for different topics that they would be exploring. Like the, at some point there was this balloon that they had to pop and it was related with them letting go of something. I don't remember the details because this was, was what, like six years ago or something like that. Yeah, and then at the end, the guy on the screen, the radio host was actually in the other room. So he would come on the screen, uh, on the, it, it, he would enter the, the room where the person was and then they could hug each other and just interact face to face. So there were like these different levels of, first you don't know it's interactive and then you can actually talk to the person, then it's actually about you and then the person is there. So yeah, we started doing things like this and then we just got bigger and bigger. We did another one after that. Uh, where we set up this huge installation that took us weeks to make at this um, really big venue at a shopping mall. And it was like a, a division between a factory and a forest. And then there were all sort of interactive things like each tree in the forest had um, a jack where you could plug your earphones and then you could listen to the trees and there were messages everywhere and it was very much about the, I don't know, this kind of ambiguous relationship between good and evil and both the factor in the forest would try to convince you um, which, which side to support. And then you were there with more people. So it was also about, <clears throat> yeah, like the power of discourse and how you behave when you're just yourself, but, and then how it's different when you have other people around you. And yeah, that was really cool. That was already with more than one person at a time. It was like with three people at a time or four. Um, yeah, and then after that, we, we did another one and we actually got accepted to this big festival in, in Edinburgh. And that was more about eye gazing and people just come into a room and then they, for one hour, they would have like different interactions with different people gazing into each, other eyes, into each other's eyes in different ways. So yeah, anyway, this was like a very fun part of my life doing interactive performance. Um, because yeah, up until then I had been just working with visual art, like uh, at university I was doing illustration and um, video editing and um, drawing. And now, I don't know, I'm a big fan of, of Marina Abramovic and she says that, um, yeah, performance is like uh, just right after music is the most immaterial form of art. And, and I could really feel that, like the things we were creating were just in the present moment, just for those people there. And there was nothing you could take home with you apart from the experience or like nothing you could see or, um, yeah, like this is the piece of art. No, like the art is that moment. So yeah, I think that was really important for me in my artistic career. But it didn't last for very long. Like after a while, I, I was confused again about what I wanted to do. And I, 
I decided that I wanted to leave Edinburgh. Like I felt that my, my purpose, like the role that this city had to play in my life was already concluded. So I decided to leave for a while just to, I decided that I had to leave behind my job in Scotland and my relationships. And I just decided that I wanted to spend a while on my own somewhere. So I went to Thailand, like the biggest cliche European girl goes to Thailand to discover herself. <laughs> but it actually was, was great, you know, I was very much into this kind of raw veganism and this super healthy and fit community of people. And I went there and I connected with that kind of crowd. And I realized that, and I think this was probably one of the most important things uh, of that time, was that I realized that I, I didn't want to work for anyone else uh, ever again. When I was in Edinburgh, my day job was doing support work, working with disabled people. And I was like, no, I just want to um, work for myself and do something creative. So because I was very much into personal development and this kind of health and relationships, I, I started freelance writing uh, about those topics. And actually after that, after a while, my partner and I came together again and we started doing that together. And we just started a yeah, business together that lasted around four years. And, and throughout that time, I was, I, was, I was making some art. I was illustrating most of the things that I was writing and I was doing illustrations also for other people's work. But it always felt like this um, like secondary thing, like the writing was the thing and then there was this drawing and I would just do it because people said they liked what I was drawing, but I didn't really enjoy it. It felt more like a chore. Um, and I was, I was drawing for myself like every once in a while, but I wasn't really focusing on it. And I, yeah, I think I didn't enjoy it so much throughout this whole time. And it was also quite a stressful time in my life because I, I was feeling like a lot of financial anxiety now that I was starting to learn how to work for myself and make a living being an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, we're like my partner and I were doing, we eventually started doing courses about habit building and just, um, yeah, uh, how to be healthier, how to have better relationships, this kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it was quite stressful. And, and throughout that whole time, I was living a nomadic lifestyle. So every two weeks to three months, we were moving somewhere else. So that was also quite stressful for me. And yeah, more recently, so that was in the beginning of 2020, I moved to the Azores. So the Portuguese archipelago where I've been living, I've been living recently. And yeah, that, I was like finally settling down someplace and just staying there for a while. And this is where I started becoming interested in community building. Um, and that's when I started learning about micro solidarity. That's also when I joined in Spiral. That's um, this online community of people who are basically helping each other do work that feels meaningful for them. And yeah, through Inspiral, I met Richard Bartlett, um, who is, who is uh, Rich Decibels on Twitter. Yeah, and through him, I, I got introduced to Twitter. So I knew that he was there and then I started following him and I noticed that he was like tweeting in a way that seemed lots of fun and not cringy like most of the stuff I had seen before um, and not salesy or like not with a like secondary goal just like for the sake of being there and I really liked that and I started following his friends and then I eventually started making my own friends and that's how I kind of joined this part of Twitter that we are now both a part of. And eventually I came across Visa's Do 100 Thing Challenge. And I was like, huh, that would be interesting to do this with drawings. I mean, it's 
a skill that I have and I haven't practiced in a really long time. And it would be cool to just see what happens, no pressure. Um, so I started doing that and I started posting my drawings and people started liking them. So it was really nice to like have that external encouragement from people. And eventually people started to ask me for portraits or uh, illustration commissions. And, <clears throat> and that was great. I was like, wow, I, maybe I, I can do this as my main thing. And I was really, really enjoying it because, because I had to make a hundred of them. I had to look for new ways to make it fun and learn new things. So I could really see myself improving and surprising myself with the amount of cool things I was doing that I never knew I could do before. Um, yeah, and, and since then I'm, I've been drawing a lot and this was in, uh, yeah, earlier this year. So maybe like six months ago that I started and yeah, since then I started new projects. I started doing my Vibe Traits projects and I started collaborations with amazing people uh, doing projects that I really like. Like I started my collaboration with you. Um, and yeah, I'm, I like I, throughout this whole time, I really, I never really identified as an artist. It always felt kind of shaky to say that this is what I do or this is a thing I do, but now I'm just like really making peace with it and really accepting it and enjoying it. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm an artist and I like it and it's great. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, that's my journey. Mm. Yeah, I love seeing your journey over the last six months or so since I've been following you on Twitter. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great to hear sort of the backstory on what came before that. and. And there's maybe a couple of things that you mentioned that I'd like to circle back to. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I remember when I first saw your drawings, like your hundred drawings that, um, I don't know, I guess there's a vibe, like for me, when I'm doing the hundred drawings now too, which you and Isa inspired me to do. And like, for me, it's very much like, oh, I'm not good at drawing. So I'm just going to try it and see where I get. And then, yeah, I knew that I'd get better out or doing a hundred of them, but like, I definitely am not like an artist and I don't do it professionally and I didn't go to art school. And so uh, that was so interesting to like realize at a certain point that like, oh, you had trained professionally as an artist and like, um, uh, you know, it makes sense sort of from what you're saying that you had like kind of put it aside or thought it was a secondary thing for so long and that you were kind of coming back to it and seeing it from a new perspective. Um, but I'd be really curious to hear more about the like what art school was like for you I know you didn't really enjoy that time period of your life but I, you know since I've never been to art school I'd be curious to hear just what that training involved formally and, and what kinds of things you did while you were there mm -hmm. yeah so I studied graphic design um and I yeah I did a lot of different things there which I'm very grateful for like I learned a lot of skills that I still use today and that are very helpful, like especially working with specific kinds of software. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guess some of the things that I liked the most was learning how to present things in public and learning how to receive feedback and be okay with that. I don't think I actually fully um, learned that back then, but it's something that I sometimes go back to um, in the recent years and I remember that actually that was very helpful back then because yeah most of the classes we had were very practical we would just do things uh, during class and we then would do more things at home and then we would come back to the class and just like show them uh, yeah I learned I had different subjects I don't even know if I remember I probably don't remember all of them yeah most of them were practical there was also some theory but yeah we had um we had illustration we had filmmaking we had um I don't know how you call that in English I just know the name in Portuguese but like this kind of analog printing technique um we had um 
we had sculpture, we had painting, we had drawing, we had, yeah, we had design. And yeah, I feel like having such a variety of, of topics that I studied has been very helpful for me because I can do a lot of different things. Like I, I, I still probably like if I would download Blender and try to do some 3D animation stuff, I'm sure I could still do pretty basic stuff and, and then learn more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think what, what was missing mostly for me was knowing what I was doing there because I felt like at that time in my life, I was just kind of wandering aimlessly around and just doing what I was, what I thought I was meant to be. Like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be at college now. And <clears throat> I'm like, I chose a degree that seemed cool, that required the kind of grades that I had and had some potential for employment, but I didn't actually imagine myself being a graphic designer. Um, and yeah, I didn't really know what I wanted out of it. So for most of it, I was just like pushing through and trying to finish the degree and completing the assignments and um, feeling like I didn't really belong. Um, but also I, also I didn't know where else I belonged or what else I wanted to be doing. So it was just like a strange period of my life. Um, yeah, that's some of my experience of college. I don't think that the way how my degree was organized and taught was also the best it was like mm, some classes were cool but a lot of them i i could have learned those things by myself at home <laughs> hmm. Hmm. are there any um like i visited you in portugal earlier this summer and uh I got to see some of the art that your mom's kept and I would just be curious to hear how you would describe the art that you made at that time, like what <laughs> kinds of things you made and uh, I, I think it would be interesting for people to hear about that, yeah. Um, okay, I don't want to be too self-judgmental and I some of the stuff I, I made back then was really cool, but uh, most of it was just like completing assignments for for my classes and my heart wasn't in it at all mm -hmm. um and also there's this thing that i mentioned before which is that i was trying to like have a specific style that was the kind of style that was trendy at that time um <clears throat> this kind of hipster vintage weird for the sake of being weird kind of shocking uh, I didn't feel like myself at all. So a lot of my work back then is like that. It's like really ugly, you know, like just trying to cause an impression for the sake of it. Just, uh, yeah, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't really connect with it right now um, when I look back at it, but I, I look at it with with love and just like remembering the person that I was and being like, oh, I really didn't know what, what I wanted at the time. And, and I'm so grateful that shortly after that, I, I just found my path. Like I wasn't happy at, at all during college. I was just very confused and forcing myself to do something that I didn't really want to be doing. And, and I think the stuff I was making was a reflection of that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really myself. But at the same time, it was it was still me trying to find who I was. And and I guess I'm still doing that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, yeah. Did you get that impression when you saw it at all? Like when you saw those things that I made back then? It makes sense when you say it and in the context that you're giving. But like, well, for one, I think there's just, um, it was really obvious and it's been obvious, you know, the more of your art that I've seen, but like how much of a broad range there is of how many styles you're capable of doing. Like, you know, a lot of the things that you do right now are sort of like abstract or sort of like cartoons or something like that, like cartoon-esque or just like paintings. But um, 
you know, that you can do like incredibly realistic stuff or that you did like, uh, I don't know, there was a few that I saw that were like, um, not exactly like traditional, but like sort of like modern painting art type stuff or, um, you know, just a huge range of stuff. And it makes sense that you were like trying to find your voice and find out who you were. And um, they're all, they're all just for the record. I mean, you might not agree, but this is my podcast and I can say it. Uh, I think they're all beautiful. Like they were, they were just really impressive. And um, it makes sense that you'd sort of associate them with like all of the emotions and moods and confusion that you felt at the time. But um, there's some really good stuff that uh, I would be proud of if I made stuff that good. So um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. And uh -huh. I'm like, I'm happy about everything I made. It's yeah. just, yeah, I, I remember how it felt and it didn't really feel, I didn't feel good back then. Mm, totally, totally. Yeah, I think this sort of comes into, um, I think one of the elements that I see in your art that I really like is this quality of clarity about who you are and your own experience and sort of uh, an introspective quality. And um, there's a lot of allusions to things like internal family systems or maybe other practices. And it seems like I'm kind of getting a sense from what you're saying that there's a trajectory of like, in school, you were learning all these technical skills and trying things out, but you didn't really know who you were. And then it took some time to like, discover your own identity and like do that inner work. And then from there, the skills sort of made sense to use. And like, well, for, does that seem like a fair sort of description or is that is that missing yeah. something? No, I think that's that's fairly accurate, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious to hear like from that sort of introspective inner experience side, like what some of the practices are that you've done or things that you've been exposed to that really help you to find, yeah, like to find yourself basically and find your own voice and your own path as you described it and your sense of who you are and who you wanna become. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I think the most consistent one that uh, has been a part of my life for many years is meditation, different kinds of meditation. Um, I'm not entirely sure how they impact my art or how they are reflected there. I think like with IFS, for example, I, I don't really, like, I think I, I've, with some of the pieces I've made, I, I made some allusion to, yeah, like parts work, but I, I didn't really think, oh, this is, I'm going to do this because it's like a reference to IFS. It's more like, I think I, I create drawings. I, I create art most of the times, at least what I'm doing right now, as like trying to kind of capture the nuance of my, inner experience and also like the emotional landscape of my relationships and people I interact with. So yeah, whatever is happening um, at that time in my life and in my relationships, that's, that's what I try to transpose into my art. So yeah, that have specifically impacted my, my art. I'm, I'm just like realizing that IFS is there because you mentioned it now, but I wouldn't remember of mentioning it as something that I bring into my work um but yeah definitely IFS has been a big part of my uh my inner work uh yeah and as I was saying meditation I have a um well for a big part like I started meditation with just like going to um this was and yeah, this was at this time when I decided that I wanted to leave Edinburgh and I wanted to like be on my own and discover who I am. And I decided to go to one of the 10 day uh, Goenka Vipassana retreats. And that's how I discovered meditation. And then I started getting into uh, the mind illuminated and just like concentration. And from then, uh, from there, I kind of started exploring more heartfulness practices. And um, yeah, more recently I've been uh, also because of your influence, I've been working more with, um, yeah, my energy body and just doing other kinds of practices to, um, yeah, work with energy a little bit more. Um, yeah, you know, like Tai Chi and standing meditation. Mm -hmm. mm. And 
yeah, I'm, I'm sure there have been other things, but I would say that meditation in general and, and IFS have been the, the two most uh, present ones these, these past few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wanted to ask you about that because I think that this does really show through in your art. Like sometimes it's explicit, like there are maybe words that refer to these things or things like that. But I think even in the other ones, somehow it comes through that that you're a very self-aware, like integrated person. And uh, that's one of the things that's always really drawn me to your art personally. And um, yeah, I think that it's also something that's made it feel like a very natural fit to work together and collaborate. I've been so grateful that you've been uh, willing to be like sort of the illustrator for my blog. And, and then of course we made we made this guy together, uh, <laughs> which is, so your art is on my body now, uh, which I'm so grateful for. And um, yeah, but it's like, I don't know, I remember last year I was looking for an illustrator to do with my blog. Like last year I was trying to do um, 30 blog posts in the last six months of the year. And I was trying to find someone to illustrate the blogs and the posts. And um, yeah, there just wasn't like really a good fit in terms of the person and the willingness and the style. And I think just, it felt like something really clicked for me when I put your some pre-existing pieces that you made into my posts, like, and also when we started collaborating on specific images for different posts together. And um, yeah, so on my end, I'm like extremely grateful that you've been collaborating with me. And, you know, I would be curious to hear from you if there's anything that you've learned from that collaboration, like working together on the blog or the other projects that we've done together, uh, if there's anything that you've learned in that process of working together. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I think one of the things is um, how important it is to have people before projects. Like we started collaborating because uh, we, we wanted to work with each other and we wanted to do something together. And that was the first intention. And then, um, I, I, yeah, I think if I remember correctly, like I, I remember this being an intention and then you asked me to illustrate one of your blog posts that you were in the process of writing. So, and I, since the beginning, we had this intention of just like the, the priority is to have a good relationship and to have fun working together. And then whatever comes from that is kind of secondary. Mm -hmm. mm. What else? I've always felt like it was really, mm, yeah, receiving feedback from you feels very easy. I usually struggle a lot with receiving feedback from people. And, and I know it also works the other way. Like I've experienced people feeling very nervous about giving me feedback. Um, but because we had this relationship before the, the, pro the project, there was a certain level of trust and safety there that, um, and I think, I don't know, I, you, you, I, I think you just have like feedback skills, like you know how to, to communicate in a kind way and um, yeah, and be compassionate and expect that certain kinds of feedback will be hurtful and just not do those. Um, and yeah, I've always felt very appreciated for the work that I was doing. Um, I learned that mood boards are great. It's now every time I work with someone, I unless it's like an ongoing collaboration and I kind of already know what the person is after or if the person asked me for something really specific, I always ask them for a mood board, like show me the kind of stuff that you like. Um, what are other similar kinds of work that you saw and would like me to be inspired by? Um, maybe describe the vibes that you're that you're after a little bit. Um, yeah, so definitely this is one of the biggest things that I learned from you. Uh, and I think that's something that you introduced, not me. You just gave me a mood board. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, those are some of the things that I've learned from this collaboration with you. Yeah, I know when I've been making those mood boards for like specific posts that we've collaborated on together, like 
specifically making the review, I've found it really useful to write the intention. Um, like, I don't think I did that in the past or to the length that I do now where I'm like, hey, this is what I want to create and like go into even an absurd amount of detail of like, this is what's I'm, like the Berbea post that we just finished. Like, I think that was easily the most challenging project we've done together and um, like just really fine on a lot of dimensions. And um, yeah, like, so I had to have a lot of detail of like what I was looking for and why I was creating the post and then even like sharing the post with you as we were making it, which seems like a no brainer, but eventually early on and I was thinking like, oh, I can just create the mood board from the beginning. But over mm -hmm. time I've realized like waiting until I have a draft of the post so you can kind of just see how the image will still fit into it. It makes it much more coherent in my experience. Um, I don't know if you'd agree with that, but that's been what I've been thinking recently along those lines. Yeah, for sure. I've noticed that it's a very, um, it's like the, the, the process of collaboration has been changing uh, with every project that, that we do together. And yeah, it's, it seems like at first you tell me about the idea and there's like a, an initial mood board and then it, it changes as you work on the draft and then as I have ideas and I tell you about them and then I tell you oh this might be something that's going to be hard what do you think we should do about it um, mm -hmm. and then yeah it feels like we're co-creating something and that's that's really cool even if I'm making the drawings uh, you I you give me feedback on them and you suggest things and you share the post with me and I also give you feedback on it um, totally I'm so glad you say that because uh, whenever we finish images for these posts, I always feel like there's a certain emotional tone of like you like you made the drawings. They're your art. Like I couldn't draw what you draw, and that's why I ask you to do <laughs> them. Uh, but also, it's like wow, like I helped make this, and like I had the idea, and like had the images, and like yeah, it really does feel like a co-creation, and I feel so proud of the the posts that we make together and I don't know if you go back and look at the posts that I had before I started working with you like I think it just is such a night and day difference to have like illustrations that we co-conceived mm -hmm. together for the posts like long form writing is like you know uh, people don't love reading long posts which is the kind of thing that I like to write and I think it just <laughs> really brings it to life like um even even the the sort of the first article we did together the sexuality one which is like a relatively spicy topic um like that that post is like pretty dry you know it's not actually that fun to read it's not like oh it's erotica or something it's like here's how you move energy through your body you know uh but like the, the images just really bring it to life and i found that people um really resonated with the article much more than they would have i think if it if it didn't have the images so um, yeah, I'm so glad that you say that it's a co-creation, like the, the writing, the images, it really feels like something we do together. Um, yeah, it does. And this is something that I'm leaning more and more um, towards. It's this kind of collaboration where it is very much co-creation. It just feels so much more fulfilling. I mean, every time someone commissions something from me, it ends up being some sort of, like th they also have input uh, to a certain degree um, but I think there's like a whole spectrum of how much uh, control I have over it and how much control the other person has over it and yeah like I really like when we when it's assumed that it is a co-creation it is a collaboration and we both have a say into it um, about it equally and yeah, this is definitely the kind of project that I'm into right now because it's like some people have very clear ideas about what they want visually and they have a great aesthetic sense, but they just don't know how to draw. And it's a lot of fun to just try to imagine that together. And uh, and I'm just the person who is putting it into visual form, but, but the idea was there and it was like part of the creation process was in the communication and that's that's really rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. I could imagine that being like, I don't know for me when I've been doing these drawings, like sometimes it's hard to get to like the blank canvas as it were, even though it's my iPad, but then be like, I don't know what I'm gonna draw today. And then like, I imagine having these really 
specific ideas or context really helps with that as well, like creative blockages of mm -hmm. just you don't have that problem if there's like collaboration that you're doing with someone. Uh, yeah, definitely. Although sometimes, the, I mean, often there's the like the opposite. It's I wish I would have complete freedom and then mm -hmm. I have something really specific and I, I feel like drawing, but I don't feel like doing this specific thing. <laughs> but if I would just choose to do that specific thing, then it would be fine. But because I know that it is what I want to do, like I feel so much resistance. Uh, and this is also an interesting challenge that I'm trying to work with because I, I have, yeah, a lot of work that is for someone or with someone. And um, I'm, yeah, trying to balance my time and my work to have both time to just do something spontaneously um, and do things that are pre-planned like it doesn't even have to be something for someone but like now I'm doing this 30 days of gratitude drawings and I like often I just don't feel like doing the gratitude drawing because it's something that I I decided I have to do so it already feels constraining but I could literally do anything for that drawing like I could I can be grateful for so many things. The drawing could be anything, but still, because there is an idea that I have to do it, it already feels constraining. So yeah, there is. It is nice to have constraints, but sometimes it it just feels like I just want freedom. <laughs> totally, totally. It's fascinating how much making art, like both from my own experience of making art recently and from hearing you talk about it, like how much that really brings out different like psychological inner dimensions of things that come up and like it seems like a really good avenue to work on things that I wouldn't have expected you could work on but it's like gets right to the heart of certain themes um mm. I know um I also coming back to this theme of collaboration like something that occurred to me just recently really with this Berbea post that we just did is um like at a certain point, I realized it would be helpful to sort of state explicitly, like, I don't want to publish anything that we're not both 100% happy with. Mm -hmm. Like that one was so tricky to do with like different styles and colors and stuff. And we had to do a lot of experimentation. And I just, I found that helpful to be like, hey, I want us both to be really happy with and proud of these images. And like, I think that was, that was super helpful and sort of establishing that vibe of, of co-creation and like, building something together that we both liked and both had input into. Um, hmm. So circling back to sort of your background a little bit, um, I'd just be really curious to hear what influences have there have been on your own art and like what different styles or artists have had a particularly like big impact on you and the styles that you've tried to make over the years. Hmm. There's, no, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, there's also many all across many different fields. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just going to mention some as they come to me. So one, I think one of the things when I think about my influences, uh, one of the things that, that first comes to my mind is adventure time and mm -hmm. the whole adventure time world. Mm -hmm. I think watching Adventure Time, um, yeah, many years ago was one of the first times that I, I realized that something can have its own flavor of weird and and like a whole world can can represent like all the characters there have their own specific weirdness. And it's just so cool because it's at the same time so naive and so dark and so childish and so uh adult uh yeah i i loved adventure time because it it's such a specific kind of feeling that this world gives you and i guess it just showed me that i can also create my like my art can also have its own feeling and i'm still trying to find out what that can be for me but it's it's a fun thing to explore and the same thing happened for example with with David Lynch and specifically Twin Peaks like Twin Peaks is one of the most unique pieces of cinema I've ever seen and it's again like adventure time it's just so specifically weird um 
and I it kind of makes me want to live there and just like immerse myself in that world and absorb all these things that make it so special um and I yeah I guess like with with these examples and a lot more things that I like for example I love in in literature I, I've I think my work indirectly has been very influenced by by Murakami's work which is also like I think all these examples they have some darkness in them and also some humor and yeah like this element of of weird um and they all have this very specific vibe to them that really inspires me to ask what what is my vibe and what do I, what what are the metaphors that I want to be using and um what are the ways that I can express this these things inside myself that I don't know how to express in any other way uh yeah I I, I don't know I'm thinking about specific works uh I one of the biggest influences in terms of visual art has been unflattening by by Nick Suzanis. like I, I can't even begin to describe how much this book has influenced everything I do um, in so many ways like combining words and images this is something that I I I've been trying to incorporate into my art and I think that it's one of the most powerful ways that I I have found to express the things that I want to express through my work and yeah not just in combining words with image but just like combining opposites and integrating them and this crazy ability that he has to just step out of a frame and into a different frame and then just bend the rules of what you can do with image on paper i find that incredible um and i like i hope one day i can make something that is has even like one tenth of the quality of, of unflattening is yeah i it's been so impactful for me um one specific artist that has been very impactful for me he's relatively small i actually met him when i was in thailand his name is connor mcmillan and he does this i i'm especially a big fan of his watercolors and his uh, ink one line drawings and yeah it, it, he has inspired my one line drawings and also these very um like these drawings about interactions between two people where you just focus on capturing a very specific emotional flavor of what is happening there and then you capture this with words and with image uh, yeah, and with the one line drawings, there's a very specific flavor of his work, this kind of vulnerability and and this feeling of really relating with someone else's experience of being human, connecting with another human and all the fears that, that come from that. And yeah, just wanting to be accepted, afraid of being rejected, just wanting love and finding your own beauty in in the things that you don't like so much about yourself. Yeah, I, I like a lot of cartoon-like stuff. Like I, I, I remember a few years ago, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, with Strange Planet comics by Nathan Pyle. Like when, I, <laughs> when it first came out, I was like, wow, this is so cool how you can see reality from the eyes of an alien and just like name things differently. And it's just so absurd and it really puts everything we see and know into perspective and yeah i find it fascinating and and definitely like the the sense of of weirdness is always there in all the, the works that have influenced me somehow um what else well miyazaki and, and studio ghibli in in general have uh yeah been a, a big part of it as well like i I don't know, uh, there's just so much beauty and sadness in it. And just the fact that I, I don't understand so much of it because it's so different from Western children's animation. And, and it's so beautifully illegible in so many ways, but also so clear uh, with so much of the messages that, that it wants to, to, to show us. And, 
again, like adventure time, it is for children, but it's so relevant for adults. Um, yeah, I, I, I also like Miyazaki as a person. I watched this documentary about him. I don't remember the name, but how he conducts his work and how he has all these routines and how even despite being like the most successful animator in the world, he still struggles with his self-worth and just like getting creative blocks. It's, it's just very humbling. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very relatable to see him as a real human being. Um, and yeah, that just inspires me to keep I don't know, like I really struggle. It, this is one of my biggest struggles is I always feel like an imposter with my art and with the, so many things that I do. And it seems like um, it, it's always gonna be there to some extent. And, and, and seeing, like looking at the people behind the work that I admire and seeing that they're humans is always very inspiring to see that, uh, yeah, it's okay to make mistakes and to not be perfect. So yeah, also being here in this podcast and just like thinking, oh, what are people gonna be thinking about things that I'm saying? And like, are uh, are these influences, good influences and is my work, does it make sense? Is it deep enough? Is it smart enough? Is it good enough? Is it uh, competent enough? Um, yeah, so I really like him as a person because of that as well. Yeah, those are some of my influences. I mentioned this before, but I would really love to see an animation someday that's in the style of your drawings. Like I think <laughs> it could really come to life if they were if there was like an animation like Adventure Time or Miyazaki's films or something like that. So I'm just gonna put that out into the world and <laughs> hope it comes back to me someday. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting that you sort of talked quite a bit about um, weirdness, this element of weirdness, and that definitely comes through in your drawings. And I wonder if you would, if you could talk about like what that weirdness is and what it means to you and how it shows up in your drawings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you asked me this a while ago, and I, I have been thinking about it ever since. And I, I think like the weird the weird bits, uh, the weird aspects in my drawings is what what really makes them mine. It's like if I just make something, um, and it's just like conventionally beautiful, I I I feel kind of disconnected from it. It's like something there is missing. It's just a beautiful drawing, but it isn't really art, and it isn't really mine. And I'm just talking about my own work. Like I like art that has nothing weird about it at least from where I see it and I still like it and it it really belongs to someone else and it it speaks to me but um to me weirdness is I don't know like weirdness has a bit of darkness in it there's a correlation between those and I find that being able to express my weirdness is being able to accept those shadow parts of me and and bringing that weirdness into my art is like integrating those parts of me and that feels really healthy and yeah I think there's a there's there's things about me there's things I want to convey like parts of my personality that I I don't know how else to show them and to express them other than through this specific vibe in my art like I every time I try to do anything else like I can't do that through writing I can't do that by talking to someone uh, but I can do that through my drawings and it just comes very naturally so it's definitely a way to express something in me that I don't know how to express any other way um, yeah and, and and as I said before like all these influences that I have and artists I admire usually have something that I find weird about them or dark about them um, yeah, I think I think this is pretty much what weirdness is about, and it, it's one of my my main talking points. Is just like you you can you can be weird, and it's it once you accept your weirdness, then it's it's beautiful, and then you're like accepting and expressing yourself as a whole, and it feels much more complete 
and much more real and much more relatable. Yeah, I, I think that that has really come through in your art and definitely one of the things that's drawn me to it. And I'm just remembering as you talk about that, like that was something I really wanted to show when we traded vibe treats. You know, you uh, <laughs> you asked me a while ago to do a vibe trait for you, which I was like, oh, this was before I even started drawing uh, or started drawing again recently. And uh, I was like, oh no, <laughs> but um, it was kind of funny because you made a vibe treat for me and it was like a forest and there's like a beautiful heart in the center and it's so beautiful. <laughs> and then I made one for you and it's this like funky dinosaur with like one boo and it looks like Bob I hadn't thought of this consciously but Bob Ross is definitely in there it's like it's like literally the same posture as Bob Ross like that didn't occur to me after and the she has this like fro and uh like a pink dress and um one yeah, boob. The one, just the one boob and uh yeah I think it hmm yeah, like just knowing you and what you said in that conversation for that vibe trait, like that's what I really wanted to bring out was the weirdness and how, um, yeah, like in the, in her right hand, there's like a jewel. And then in the left hand, there's this sort of paintbrush. And it's like, you talked about um, like having this inner experience and awareness of inner experience and, and then uh, finding a way to express that visually. And so it was like, yeah, I was trying to convey that you were like translating your experience into art and that the art was sort of like weird and that's was expressing who you are. And like, <laughs> uh, I, I think it's just sort of funny when you put them next to each other because it's just like this beautiful forest and then this like weird dinosaur <laughs> painter person. Uh, hopefully you were pleased with it, but. Uh, I am, yeah. I am, I told you that I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. Maybe just getting it on the record for people that might not understand you or what, why I would draw a one boobied dinosaur Bob Ross for you. Yeah. Um, no, I love it. I think it represents me very well. Yeah. Apart from the fact that I actually have two boobs, not just one, but that's not literal. <laughs> I see. Okay. Good to know. Um, so. Yeah, I did want to ask you about the vibe traits, though. I think this is one of the projects that you're working on now, and it's really mm -hmm. resonated for people. Like, I love the one that you did for me, and uh, my other favorites are the ones you did for Jane, who's been on the show, and also Michael mm -hmm. Ashcroft, who's been on the show. And it's it's always really nice to see someone, see a vibe trait for someone that I know, because I'm like, oh, yeah, that is their vibes. And then also, um, you know, even for people that I don't know, to like, that's such a powerful way, like, I find myself really drawn to the people that get a vibe trait because it like gives you a sense oh this is who this person mm -hmm. is like oh i'd love to know a person that's like like you just made this one recently that's like a space station house under the moon and it was like so beautiful i was like oh i, I would be so super curious to get to know such a person <laughs> um yeah so tell me about what vibe traits are and like what in what goes into making them and anything more mm -hmm. that you'd like to share about what those are yeah uh so I describe a vibe trait as it's it's like a portrait but of your vibe instead of your face and how it works is I have a call a 30 minute call with someone and then anything can happen in that call and I just connect with the person um, usually like what happens most often I would say like 80% of the times is that I ask the person questions and they answer and then eventually it becomes a little bit into it, more of a conversation um and then i i take notes of those things and then i start visualizing them as um yeah just like trying to imagine what they would look like visually and sometimes those are specific things that the person told me but um they can also be my own observations or conclusions about the person and yeah, it, it's a process that has been changing a lot. Like the kind of questions I ask has been changing a lot. The how I transpose what I get from the call into this drawing has also been changing. Um, this is something specific that I've been working with recently. Like at the beginning when I started making these, I I would have a call with a person and connect with them and take notes. And then later I would sit with the notes and then try to come up with uh, 
with a visual representation of that. Now, what I'm doing more and more is try to uh, shorten the pipeline between seeing the person and having a drawing. So during the call, I'm not only taking notes, but I'm already trying in real time to transpose what those things might look like. And I'm also trying to explore metaphors more and also, um, how would I say it? Like, uh, yeah, more, more abstract concepts, trying to translate abstract concepts into, uh, into visuals. Like sometimes there's a sense that a certain person is more focused on the process of achieving something rather than just getting to a specific outcome. And then that's gonna look like certain kind of shapes, like continuous, more open, more fluid um, thing rather than like a, a one concrete, maybe sharper. And this is like, not necessarily like this all the time. I'm just giving an example of what it could be because then there's a lot of other variables that can come into it as well. And yeah, sometimes I notice that the person has specific, like their specific connotations that certain shapes or colors or uh, objects or elements have for the person. So if I can take advantage of those, I do. Um, yeah, I would say that there's different kinds of calls that I have as well. So some of them are just like, an interview and I ask the person questions and I'm genuinely curious about hearing the answers and then I just keep asking uh, according to what I feel the most curious about and I reflect things back at the person and, and I love those uh, and sometimes there's more yeah talks where the person is very curious about me and they actually want uh, like a portrait of the vibe of our interaction together uh, more than of themselves as an individual. So yeah, they're interested in playing with me and learning about me. And um, usually in those calls, yeah, some people have clear preferences of what they want from their vibe trait. Like they would say that they wanted to remind them of a certain goal that they want to achieve or like a specific version of themselves that they wanna progress towards. And sometimes people are just like, oh, I'm just curious how you see me and I just whatever. Um, and sometimes I have calls that are very different than the norm where like sometimes you just spend some time in silence, just vibing with each other. Uh, sometimes there's an instant connection and we either almost understand each other without saying anything or we just spend the whole time laughing and we can't stop laughing and uh, yeah there's all sorts of interactions I think I've done I don't know maybe 50 of these I'm not sure but something around that number by now and and each time I'm just like surprised by how different people can be and how different these interactions can be and uh, I feel I also feel surprised by the amount of different things I can come up with and how much inspiration each call gives me. Like, I think if I would think about this at the beginning of this project and imagine that I would do 50 vibe trades and I would be able to come up with something different for each person, I'd be like, no way, I'll run out of ideas. But then each person just, just gives me so much and there's so much, um, so many ideas like especially now that I'm already during the call trying to imagine and and transform this information into visuals each person is such a rich source of beautiful images and it feels really like again it's something we are co-creating it's like a lot of the creative process happens in in those calls and this is something that I'm trying to make uh, more and more present, like have more of the process happen during the calls where I basically have the image in my mind, ideally all of it by the end of that call and then just make it rather than have a call and then later come back to it and think about it 
uh, when it's not so fresh in my mind anymore and I don't feel so connected to the person anymore and draw it. And I think slowly I'm, I'm progressing towards that. And I don't think I had actually articulated this like that before. So uh, thanks for listening <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's actually very helpful and it's definitely something I, I wanna move towards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those conversations themselves are so powerful. Like mm. I learned so much about you when we had the one for making you and uh, doing a vibe trade of you. And then certainly I was very surprised by the things that came out of my mouth when we had the conversation preparing for my vibe trade. And yeah, I mentioned this at the time, but I, just as a suggestion, I would really recommend maybe even just giving people the option to record the calls because mm -hmm. they're just, it's surprising. Like, even though it's half an hour, I, I remember when I first heard at the vibe trade, it's like, oh, half an hour, that seems like pretty short, but there's just so much in there that gets brought out and um yeah I, i've been it's it's fascinating to hear that you have had 50 already like they've just absolutely exploded and <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of demand for them too so yeah, yeah. um yeah i want to circle back you sort of alluded to this earlier but um you talked about like looking for your own style or uh vibe or something like that and I pulled out this description from a Patreon update that you did a while ago that I'd like to read and then ask you about, about this sort of direction that you're going in. Um, so you said, as for my own creative practice, for a while I've been having this feeling that I'm getting really close to something, an idea, a direction, an insight, a coming together of all the things I've been doing and all the skills I've been developing, a next step that will completely transform what I'm doing and will have a pew huge positive impact on people around me. Um, that whole update was just really beautiful and I'll try to link to it in the show notes. But uh, yeah, and I think you go on to say in that as well that like maybe it'll just be a series of steps continuing to lead in that direction rather than like one discrete step. But yeah, I'd be curious to ask more about it, like what this direction that you see yourself going in, whether it ends up being like one big step or a series of steps, like what is it that you're aiming for and, and what do you sense about it? Hmm. Um, this thing that I was talking about before in, in regards to collaboration, I think this is definitely related. I don't know exactly what it will look like, but I, I can see more and more that my work is um, less and less just from myself to the world, but more myself with the world. So doing collaborations and um, like vibe traits are, I, I think it, it's what they are at their core is just me being seen, not me seeing people and people feeling seen and also them seeing themselves with a new perspective. Um, and the same with my collaborations. It's like two people looking at something and having a vision and then communicating through it and then creating it. So I, I have a feeling that um, my art is gonna change a lot the more I I try to tap into these shared ideas, these collective ideas that I have with other people. Uh, like I really like, for example, illustrating other people's tweets and it's something that I don't do as, as often as I would like, but sometimes I see a tweet from someone and there's clearly an image there. And, and usually the person really resonates with that. Um, and and uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I haven't really thought about this too much, but it's definitely something that I can sense that is going to change the, everything that I'm doing a lot. Um, yeah, something else that comes to mind is making my work more embodied, like having it more connected to how I live my life and the things that I believe in. Um, and having it as a has a, a means to carry the messages that I want to put out into the world. And again, this is still something that is 
it's just a direction that I want to aim towards, but I don't know exactly what it's going to look like as it evolves. Um, but yeah, for example, I, I can imagine that now I'm going, I'm going back to the Azores for a while at least and just live in the forest or very close to nature. And I want that to change the art that I make. Like I want the things that I make to be changed by where I am and the people that I interact with and the experiences I'm living. Um, and yeah, I, I think I want it to be more permeable to things that are happening around me and to me and for me as a human being. And I think this is like the more I can open it to, to be a vessel for those things, the more powerful it can be. Yeah, I would say these are the two biggest things. Like I don't have any specific projects that I'm um, looking forward to. Like, I don't know, I, I, have, I have projects that I'm working on and projects that I already have um, um, that I know are gonna be happening. Uh, like now I'm gonna, well, if I, if I manage to do it, I'm gonna apply to this solar punk uh, contest that we've both been talking about. Um, and I wanna continue doing vibe traits and I wanna see how that develops. And I wanna continue doing the collaborations that I'm doing and um, yeah, there, there's lots of things that I'm doing right now um, and lots of things that I already know that I want to do in the future, but in terms of like general direction and things that can really change what I'm doing, those are the two things that I think have the biggest potential. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, it seems like it's less like a style or something or a specific look or something like that, although that, that I could see that evolving, but it sounds like it's more of almost like a role for you and your art in the world and like how you interact with the world and the sort of purpose that you have in the world and where your art fits into that. Does, does that seem accurate to what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And and now that, that you mentioned that, I think uh, yeah, something I've been thinking about a lot is like, what is the purpose and the role of my work in the world? Um, and, and, and this is something that I've like worried about in the past. And this is also a part of why I struggled a lot with the identity of being an artist, because it felt like I didn't really have anything to say um, that was important enough for me to like earn a living from it. And and now I'm coming to realize that it's, yeah, it's so much more about the relationships. Like it's all about the relationships and how I make art as a person in the world, rather than how do I want to change the world with my art? It's like, oh, this is how I'm going to be doing things. And, and I know that if I do that, if I do it with other people, and if I am open to my experiences changing the things I do, and let the world change what I do, then I'm probably gonna change the world in some way. And that feels like it puts a lot less pressure on me. So it just feels good. And mm -hmm. it, it, it is already what I'm doing gradually. So it's not like I'm forcing something. It's more like, oh yeah, this is what's working. So let's do more of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you mentioned that the vibe traits are about like seeing people because that that seems so important for what you're talking about of like I know for me when I when you made the vibe trade for me I felt so seen and then it was like I could see myself better through it and then other people could see me better through it and that isn't just like a passive uh like oh now there's a piece of art that's beautiful act it like actually changes how I see myself how others see me how I interact with the world how others interact with me like I think that your art and art in general really has the power to do that, to change perception and therefore change behavior. And that means change people's lives and the world. And um, I think it's something actually that you pretty much singularly have had an impact on me in of like, um, I don't know, I think I used to think that 
something like I, this was never very explicit, but something like, oh, art is just beautiful and it's like it's just for aesthetic purposes, but it doesn't really serve any higher purpose or something like that. And I've just seen how powerful art is and how even just its beauty is powerful, but like how it the process uh, reflects different dynamics within and then it's like a valuable contribution to others in all of these dimensions. And um, I just it may seeing your art and working with you has made me much more uh, more of a proponent of like wow art is this tremendous service to the world that just was just a totally novel experience for me personally as kind of like a, a philistine before this so uh, yeah um so thank you for that and thank you for the art that you make and um yeah that makes me so happy to hear mm -hmm. thanks for reflecting that mm -hmm. is there anything that's like nearby any of the things that we've talked about that you'd like to talk more about or zoom into I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm just realizing that I am. I am still so early in the process of of discovering uh, what is it that I am doing and what I want to do and yeah, what I want my art to do and what is my style and what is my voice. Um, and it feels really good to be here. It's like there's there's not a lot of pressure because it feels like I'm still experimenting and I like keeping this mindset and I hope I'll keep it forever uh, because it, yeah, it's definitely very helpful. So yeah, I'm, I'm just like saying this because it, it just came up for me like after talking about all these things um, and it just felt important to bring mm. back. Yeah, I think there's a lot that's coming alive for me too, hearing you talk about it and um... I mean, one seems it just does seem to be a process rather than like a state change or something like that. Like, oh, you have found it definitively and now you are who you are. It's like, no, it's a becoming, it's an evolving, it's a process that's dynamic over time. And and also that it's um like a co-creation with the world, with the others in your life and with the world itself. And like you are shaped by the world, the world is shaped by you, you are shaped by other people, other people are shaped by you, and there's like interactions and dynamics and, and feedback loops there. And I just really see that in the way that you're talking about it and the way that you're living it. And um, it reminds me of um, something that my teacher, Soryu, talked a lot about, of like he would describe something that he called a vow. And uh, it was sort of like adjacent to this word of like having a purpose, like you have a purpose in life, but that's sort of like um, I think that has connotations of it being like assigned to you or uh, mm -hmm. something that's discrete that you have to find or discover and it's like within you or or it's uh, it's either like within you totally or it's like in the world there's some assignment that you have like one or the others of those two spectrums but I think the way that he talked about about about, about was like much more of what you're talking about of like it being a process and something that you discover over time that's revealed through interaction with the world rather than like just from you or just from the world and like there's so much there of like i don't know like your art for example um like in a certain way like how to put it um on the one hand it's not like oh the world came to you and was like make this specific kind of art for this reason or that you had a discrete sense of I'm going to make this specific kind of image that's totally within my mind. There's much more of a like permeable interaction there that I see, especially coming to life with like the vibe traits of like you're, you're co-creating with other people or like, yeah, in our collaborations, I certainly see that of like, like the images that we make are never the thing that I imagined at the beginning. They're like so much better and so much more beautiful. And um, yeah, I, I just, the way you're talking about it and the way that you demonstrate it really highlights this for me, this process of discovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. Thanks for that reflection. Um, I was thinking about something else while we were sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 
for sure yeah like focusing on the on the process more and just like it all being about the process i think it's also about setting intentions and just deciding at which intervals you set those intentions and how you review what happened as a result of your intention and also uh setting experiments like i something i've been really enjoying doing is uh I, d I don't have a specific outcome or goal. Instead, I, I ask myself a question like, what happens if I do this? Like my constraints experiment, what happens if I just use these six colors for the next two weeks? And then I end up discovering things that I would have never discovered before. And I feel like a lot of my art is like this. I, I decide to do one thing and then see what happens from there. And that feels like a lot more fun than deciding to achieve something specific because that you, you might never achieve that and and i think there is something in there that is related with vows as well it's like what what happens if i never lie again how is that going to change my life and it's not like yeah of course i guess you have certain expectations for it like you're going to become kinder and more honest and more clear uh, or whatever you want to get from it but in the end it's just it's just a process it's just an intention and and anything might come from it and probably more than you expected if you don't expect anything mm. <laughs> if that makes sense mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's been really powerful to see like these different experiments that you've done with your art how i really see them coming into each new image and like like just as an example um you started doing these like blobs that are these like liquidy blobby things that are really beautiful and uh but they're sort of abstract and like um yeah they're different i hadn't, I hadn't seen anything quite like them before and then there's a vibe trait that you made recently where it was like oh there's there's like blobs in there they're like <laughs> sort of subtle and they're in the background yeah. and um but it was like oh this clearly has been influenced by making those blobs that's like the same textures and style and i think it really brought out that particular vibe treat in a way that might not have been there otherwise. Um, it's it's been really cool just to see how all these different experiments like evolve, help your art evolve over time. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I can see that happening for sure. Things I sometimes it it seems like an experiment is kind of useless while you're in it, at least while you don't discover anything particularly striking, and then later you you're doing something else and you're like oh yeah i actually did this thing before and it didn't really fit back then but i could actually use it right now and i'm glad that i know how to do it because it would be perfect for this and if i wouldn't have done it before for absolutely no reason i would have never realized right now that it would be the perfect fit for this so yeah absolutely are there any other like experiments that you're hoping or planning to do with your art in the future that you have a sense of? Hmm. Not at the moment. Well, right now I'm, I'm doing this uh, gratitude um, 30 drawings, 30 gratitude drawings, because I, I, yeah, I just wanted to practice gratitude and, and I thought, what, what if I just make them into drawings rather than just like journaling about them? Or yeah, I usually think about a few things that I'm grateful for, and then I choose one of them to make into a drawing. Um, and yeah, so that's, I'm like maybe halfway through it right now. And yeah, it's quite interesting to see how how differently I do it every day, depending on the time that I have, the energy that I have, the kind of thing that I've been doing. Like if I was working on a vibe for it, then I used a specific style. Maybe I might just continue with that for the drawing, uh, the gratitude drawing. Um, yeah, so that's something that I'm doing right now for the future. I don't know. I'm, I think the solar punk Thing will be quite an experiment i've never done anything like it and it's going to be completely new to be honest i'm a bit scared of it and i'm kind of postponing it <laughs> because it's just like i don't even know where to start um well recently you told me this idea about like j just do the simplest thing that you can and that you would still be proud of um presenting and i think this is a great approach um 
yeah, for now I've just been gathering inspiration and researching uh, and I, I might soon start dipping my toes into actually drawing it and thinking about what I, what I want to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm just happy that I sort of challenged you. I was like, I'll do it <laughs> if you do it. Uh, uh, there was like, well, one, I just think the whole solar punk idea is really beautiful of like hopeful mm -hmm. images about the future that are like, I especially love that it's like, the, that the human world and the natural world are integrated. Like, I think a lot of art like glorifies one or the other, yeah. but I love that those come together in the solar punk aesthetic. And, um, but also, yeah, I like, for me, it was obviously, like, and I mean, who knows, but I don't think I'll win this contest. And, um, but I just knew that, uh, if I challenged you to do it, like I would get better at drawing and like you would do something new and it would be like, there'd be beautiful solar punk art that would be made. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I'm very curious to see what you do. And I, I, I don't know, I'm at least sensing that you'll make it your own in a way that's like not, I mean, we'll see what you do, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you made like a solar punk art that looks really different than anything else and that that would be really cool. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be doing solar punk art. I mean, I, I would like to see more of it in the world for sure. I'm really happy this contest is happening because there's going to be probably a lot of people applying and, and it, yeah, I love solar punk and, and it's interesting now that I'm, I'm getting into it a lot more. I, I, I can see like different kinds of solar punk and the ones I enjoy more and the ones I, I don't connect with so much. And yeah, and it's, it definitely something I would like to see more of in the world. I think solar punk is really important and there's not that much of it, I think. Um, so I'm very excited about it, like to do it, even though it feels scary, but yeah, maybe it's something I'm gonna enjoy a lot. I'm, I'm enjoying looking into solar punk art that already exists. Um, mm. And I'm, I'm really curious to see how that's gonna be for me to make it myself. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is, this is a super open-ended question, but like just talking about solar punk now or like our collaborations or other things, I think there's been a theme of like a way in which art can be a service to the world. And uh, I'd be curious to hear anything that you might have to say about your experience of that or thoughts about that, if, if anything comes mm -hmm. to mind. And I, I know it's super broad, but I, th I think you, I think you really demonstrate this, like, um, Oh, I, I don't know. You you told me like that you like what I'm doing and you believe in the things that I'm doing and so that you wanted to make art for me and work with me on my projects and like was really touched by that. And I think you demonstrate that with the work that you do that your art in a, in a lot of dimensions is a service to the world. And so I would just be curious to hear you talk more about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what comes to mind immediately is uh helping people see and feel seen. I think this is something that always happens when I make something for someone um, like vibe traits. People like not just the vibe trait, but the calls, like they usually tell me that they said things that they never even thought about before. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just really special. Um, for them to be listened to in a way like I am listening because I need to really um, think about those things and then turn them into a drawing. So I'm like really paying attention and really not just listening, but already transforming it into something. And, and I think this has a very strong component of seeing and, and being seen. So I think this is definitely something that that art has not, I mean, the vibe traits are just an example, but um, even um, seeing together, for example, like working with someone and um, turning an idea into an image or turning the words in your articles into images uh, is just, yeah, another way of seeing the ideas that were in your head and now are there visually for people to see them in a different way. Mm. Uh, 
I, I think there's a lot of complexity that that images and drawings can convey that, for example, words can't um, within like a small amount of space and time. And yeah, this is again connected to um, the idea of, for example, co-creating something. So. I really like exploring ideas that other people already have and be in that relationship with them where we are uh, trying to convey a specific message and then the image usually adds so much to it and just helps tell a story in a completely different way. Um, and I think in general, art is, is just pointing at things that are there, but maybe not so obvious, but then if you see a a piece of art um, if you like you read a fiction book or you see a painting um, or if you listen to a specific song it just it just points at something either out there in the world or inside of you that it, it's not necessarily new but you, you hadn't seen it before and you hadn't seen it in that specific way and yeah I guess it's again about seeing things in a different way or from a different angle or things you hadn't seen before. Yeah, that's what comes to mind. Anything Including yourself, you it about? seems like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you say just now? I, I sort of interrupted. I was just asking if, if anything comes to mind for you about this question. Um, I mean, just that uh, I, I sort of said this maybe a little bit more in a more complicated way earlier, but that like the act of perception is radical, like to see yourself or see others or see the world and render that in art is a, it, it's been surprising and dramatic to me how powerful that is. Like that's, it's, it's such a radical act to, uh, to perceive and then like, for lack of a better word, like render or bring to life uh, what you see, how you perceive, mm -hmm. and things shift in ways that I didn't expect when you do that. And art is just such a perfect medium for that. Uh, it, it actually reminds me, I think I have a tweet somewhere about this. It'll be, I'll have to track it down, but like you and I have both done Shinzen system and like Shinzen breaks down the phenomenological experience into like uh, he's done it differently over the years, but like nowadays he tends to do it in terms of like see, hear, feel, like visual perception, auditory perception, and somatic perception. And like there's sort of a um, spectrum in terms of like, I think this is what the tweet is about, but like the uh, like obviousness or uh, distinctness of those mediums versus like how legible they are. And like just on the one end words, right? Like, which I love, that's what I, I write. And I make these blog posts. Those are extremely legible, but there's like um, to convey a density of information is takes a lot of words to really convey an idea. Whereas your images are so powerful and just one image you can convey so much. And then of course, um, in one's experience, I think the body has the most information but it's also like the least legible. It's the opposite of words of like, words are extremely legible, but not that dense in terms of information. And I think art sort of hits that sweet spot where it has that density of information and it's like reasonably legible um, of like what's being portrayed. And so I think that's one of the reasons that visual art and um, the creative process is just so powerful because not everyone might have access to the wealth of wisdom and information that's in the body. And then of course, like words are so long-winded and like people have limited time to read, but art just kind of gets the best of both worlds, I think. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Anything else that you'd like to say or share while we're still talking? think so nothing comes up right now okay well thank you for talking to me today mm -hmm. it's been really 
lovely to hear more about your experience and your art and the things that you're doing in the world. And I'm uh, very sure that I'll want to have you come back on so we can dive deeper into these themes. So thank you so much for joining me today, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for having me here. It's been a pleasure. I'm so glad.